All right, so we are here with Dawn of Havenwood, and we're going to be discussing a little bit about the new program coming that's going to be benefiting Auburn and the greater Reiner community, and possibly larger, right? We'll see how we can develop, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so can you just tell me what is Havenwood, how did it get started? Uh, so, Havenwood Equestrian Center is a nonprofit we've recently founded to serve uh, low income students in the local area, to give them the opportunity to have riding lessons and to learn uh, horse care and offer um, the opportunity for academic tutoring and help them in their academic progress as well. I got started, I've worked with youth groups for many years in my church service, and I've loved working with youth. I really have a passion for that. And of course, I love horses, and I've had a dream for some time of putting those two passions together, seeing if I could use the working with horses to also help uh, local youth. Uh, and I, I bought this farm about five years ago, and it looked like now we had an opportunity to maybe make that dream come true. So I've been working on that for a, a little while, and it's all finally come together. So give that a shot. Um, and I saw in the local community that we had a need where we have a lot of low-income families where um, the, the teenagers especially perhaps don't have or don't recognize that they have many opportunities. And I wanted to offer them an opportunity that they don't have, perhaps to have writing lessons. And through that, to hopefully lift their sights as to other opportunities they can reach in life. That if they put hard work in, uh, they can achieve something and see goals uh, come about uh, and that they they see some positive feedback from the effort that they put in. So what is it about horses specifically that helps develop the whole of a character? So I mean you see a lot of programs you know throughout the nation that use horses to teach life lessons. So yeah. how does that work? I think there's multiple factors. One is that horses um, you can create a bond with them very easily, uh, so they're very relatable. Uh, you, you find a lot of comfort and almost therapeutic uh, action by just being around the horse, and that helps. So there's motivating factor, just wanting to be around the horse and developing that relationship. So it brings that motivation to spend the time. And they also give you good feedback that as you spend time and put the effort in, they will tell you if you're doing the right things. You, you see positive things happen both in your relationship with horse and your ability to perform with the horse as you put that effort in and put the work in. And so that feedback is very um, empowering um, and, and drives you to do more. <laughs> So I, I think, That's, yeah, this place, <laughs> right? <laughs> and also, horses themselves require maintenance and care. So you develop um, responsibility and accountability because you can't just leave them be if you don't consistently come and work with them and care for them and put the effort in. You won't see the same results. It's not like a camera you just put on the shelf and then when you're ready to use it, you have to constantly continue to to be a part of that horse, whether whether you're feeling it or not. Correct. Both for the bond you develop with a horse, for their care, and also as any, in any athletic sport, if you don't put the time in, you don't develop your skills. Uh, and you, you see that fall back if you go a week or two weeks without riding. You can tell the next time you get on that you haven't put and, that effort in. And I've seen some of the riders, and this is an athletic sport <laughs> because you, you have to stay in shape to keep doing this, right? You absolutely do. Some people will tell me it's the horse doing all the work, and that's absolutely not true. <laughs> no, no, those, those legs. Ride a horse for 30 minutes, you'll feel it in your legs. You absolutely do. And, and again, the horses give you really good feedback whether you're doing things correctly or not. Uh, so you, you can really tell <laughs> and learn what you have to do. So how long have you been involved with with equine training and horse horses in general. I mean, you got the farm five years ago. Was that the start or? No. <laughs> so I, I grew up as a horse crazy girl, but without a lot of access to horses. I would beg to go on trail rides for birthday parties and things like that, but didn't get much opportunity. Uh, and then in uh, undergrad, actually, I took horseback riding lessons for my PE requirement for, <laughs> for college. Uh, my college offered that, and so that was great. And I got my first taste of it and still loved it. Went to grad school, didn't have the opportunity to do much for some time, and then I moved to Virginia, and of course horses are everywhere here, and I had a job so I could pay for riding lessons. So that's when I really seriously got involved. Started taking riding lessons at a local schooling farm, um, and eventually ended up leasing a horse and then buying my own horse, and it was all downhill from there. So <laughs> I've been taking riding lessons now for uh, about 20 years. Uh, and learning, uh, of course, about horse care in that process 
from beginning with a leased horse where I, you know, dabbled my, dipped my toes in horse care versus now owning my own farm and having to do uh, all of the horse care aspects. <laughs> and, and, you know, w with horses, there's always something new that that can be learned. And there's a huge variety of sports. I mean, we were, last October we were out and, you know, they had the mounted shooting with the horses and you have everything from racing to jumping yeah. to just trail rides. So, yeah. so how, like with that variety, do you, do you ever get overwhelmed with, with how much there is to? Uh, no, you just choose the things that you enjoy the most. Um, when I first started writing, I mostly focused on English. I like the English style of writing. It requires you to perhaps develop more of your own balance and feel with the horse. Um, and then I did some jumping early on and then really got more into the dressage aspect, which is more of a flat work. Um, and so I focused on that recently with my horse really trying to develop that um, good way of going and trainability and my ability to help the horse really move well in dressage. Um, but then of course you've seen here today we have lots of students that do jumping. That's one of Kim's love, our, our trainer. So, and she does what's called three-day eventing where it's actually dressage, uh, show jumping, and cross-country jumping. So all of those things wrapped into one sport. <laughs> so, so you said dressage? Dressage. Dressage. Yeah. Can you tell me what that, I, I'm clueless when it comes to a lot of this was what what is dressage and what separates English style writing mm -hmm. dressage is a French word I think that actually means training um, and it it's all it's all on the flat there's no jumping in dressage and it's about learning and how to help the horse go in the most correct way we talk about the horse coming around which means they lift their back and come through from behind and use themselves really properly and effectively and it's also learning how to use quite subtle aids to help the horse do different movements so you learn to connect with the horse and use subtle aids to help them uh, move laterally so perhaps do a leg yield uh, or uh, a canter pirouette where they're really a nice collected canter and they can go in a little tight circle and do all these things. So it really requires developing um, fine communication with the horse and helping them and yourself develop the athletic ability to create that correct movement. Uh, English riding is, is differentiated by the type of saddle you use, basically. So you'll see the Western saddle has is a bigger saddle. It's got the, the horn uh, <laughs> where you can put a rope around that and you see, you know, the cowboys and cattle drive doing the Western saddle. Uh, it's, a, it's a bigger saddle, you know, it kind of supports you a, a bit more. Whereas the English saddle, there's a few types of English saddle, but um, they're, they're smaller. You're more in contact with the horse. Um, and it's a kind of a simpler <laughs> piece of equipment and it's a different style of riding. So with English, you're going to do dressage and you do the jumping. You're not going to jump in a Western saddle. You don't want to land on that horn. <laughs> that would hurt. <laughs> so, uh, so, and there's jumping saddles and there's dressage saddles that put you in a different position. Um, and so all of that is encompassed in the English riding. Now, if, if you've learned both, is it easy to, like, once you get on the saddle, you know, like, you switch back to that zone of riding and that method or is there a little bit of like going back to learning after you've been doing dressage in english and then go back to the western it's definitely different i think there are professionals who do both and can easily swap between the two uh, i find when you go to a different saddle you're in a different position and you have to kind of remind yourself even between english saddles going between a jumping saddle and a dressage saddle puts your legs in a different position and your seat in a different position and it can be hard to go back and forth unless you're doing that often. Uh, so like somebody who's doing eventing is often switching between the two saddles and they do fine. Uh, I have more trouble because I spend most of my time in a dressage saddle. So if I sit in a jumping saddle, it feels weird to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'd all feel a little bit weird to me. Uh, yeah. I, I don't ride much. <laughs> when you're new to riding, it's a different position and you use different muscles and it, you can really tell. <laughs> So going back to the program that you have established, mm -hmm. this is this year it's with Auburn, yes. right? So how many how many kids have been enrolled so far uh, as of today? So we have eight students enrolled in the program, and we're going to be doing it one day a week. We're starting small to get our feet under us and and get this going. So it will be um, four students in a group lesson, while the other four are doing some barn chores, taking care of the stalls and the other horses, and some homework time and tutoring. And then the two groups will swap uh, where the other group will go and have riding lesson and the, the first group will go and do some chores and some homework. You said tutoring is part of it. How, how did y'all, was tutoring just something natural that came with it or was that something that 
you know, later down the road, you're like, well, you know, it's cutting into homework time. No, I wanted this to be more than just learning the writing and more about developing them as people and their life skills and their future potential. So the writing is a tool to help them develop some skills, but we also want to help them academically that they can uh, get the performance there and also see that they can set goals and achieve goals in their academic work as well as in their writing so that they see in life that they can do the same thing and they have a bright future ahead of them. So I want to raise, lift their sights. It's not just all about grinding and working, you, you know, Correct. teaching the work to live, not live to work. Exactly. And that hopefully in the mentorship and the tutoring that they'll be around adults who have done that with their lives and they can get exposure to others who have succeeded and see some of what it, what it takes to, to do that. And, and know how. Exactly. How to do it. You yeah, know, know a first that it's possible <laughs> and second how to do it and then have help as they des learn, get, develop the desire to, to move forward that we can help them show them how they can find opportunities and where they can get the resources they need to pursue their future goals. And the attire, that's something that I, I noticed like watching it. the helmet, of course, like for obvious reasons, you fall, it protects your head. Absolutely. But what about the pants and the boot? Like what's so special about the boots? Because I, I see that in a question writing and it, is it just a style or is there something particular that, that it provides a certain function? There's actually a safety aspect to the boot. Uh, so especially the close toe, obviously, you don't want to get stepped on by the, by the horse and get your foot all smashed. Um, but the heel actually provides safety that it keeps your foot from sliding through the stirrup. Because okay. um, if your foot went all the way through and got caught in there and you fell off, you get dragged and that's yeah. not safe. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the, the, the heel on the boot actually is a safety aspect uh, for riding. Um, and then the, the riding pants, the breeches that you see the English riders, um, somewhat traditional in the sport. There's also a comfort level um, that those, those pants tend to be something that has a little give and a little stretch uh, this you can ride more comfortably. Uh, of course, in other you can wear jeans, but you, you'd like a jean that's got some give and some stretch in it, so you can move. <laughs> yeah. I wear jeans regularly. That's uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so the the pants are more of a comfort style, but the yes. boots are definitely a safety safety. Now, is there yeah. any other aspect of the clothing that is is paramount to safety for for the riders? That you know, let's say I have a student in Auburn that is going to be part of the program. Yeah. Like, why why is the clothing important? There's one other aspect um, that either you wear a tall boot or you wear what we call a half chap. Um, and that's a leather wrap that goes around your calf. Um, and what the, the tall boot or the half chap does is actually give you some grip on your calf and your contact and your connection with the horse. And so you need a little bit of friction and grip and not something that's just going to slide along and not give you that security in the saddle. So that also is a, a practical aspect of the riding gear. And the cowboy boot um, has a little bit of that, but you know... <laughs> Uh, not not as much of that aspect. Yeah, work work boots probably not the best idea. <laughs> yeah, actually, if the boot is too hefty, if it's got too much of a tread, that also can get stuck in the stirrup. So, you yeah, know. I'd hate to be dragged. <laughs> so a little bit about the horses. We saw three of them today. What? Where? Where did these horses come from? Did, were they? Were, were they bred specifically for this type of riding, or how, how did you come about the horses? Oh, they've all been acquired through different routes. Uh, three of the horses on the farm are mine, and uh, one of them I rode this morning uh, is Maya, and I acquired her um, four and a half years ago. Um, she actually, I was looking for a horse that had dressage training, but was also had a really nice, calm temperament. I like really solid, calm horses. And Maya's pretty unflappable, and she'd been trained through what's called third level dressage, so she knew how to do a lot of things, and so she could teach me. Um, so she ended up being a great match for me. So I bought her. Snacks is my other horse. He's a quarter horse. Um, I looked specifically for a horse like Snacks. When you own horses, people always ask if they can come ride. And for my fancy dressage horse, the answer is no. <laughs> but, so I wanted a, a horse that I could put anyone on that was just going to be calm, unflappable, and I could trust him. And Snacks is that. He's been there, done everything. Uh, quarter horses are known for being a pretty calm, solid breed. Um, and he's done everything from Western to English to a little bit of jumping, and he's pretty unfazed if anyone gets on him. He just handles it fine, and his instinct is to is more woe than go, we call it. <laughs> if he, something gets off balance, he tends to stop, which is a great response when you're putting new people on a horse. 
Um, so those are my horses and their uh, snacks is going to be a part of the program because he's, he's great for that. We had Thomas here. Thomas is one of my boarders horses and she bought him to do um, jumping, eventing sort of things, dressage and, and jumping and same sort of thing. She was looking for a horse that had a good temperament and also the athletic ability to do the things that she wanted. And, and most of that is all the horses we get here were bought for that purpose, that they have good temperament and good athletic ability for the sort of riding that we want to do. Uh, Reality, the big Greg, and Kim can talk more to her. She belongs to our instructor, Kim. Uh, she was uh, bre bred specifically to be a jumper, so she loves jumping, but she's also very talented and can do good dressage. She's getting a little older, so um, she's also very calm and, and handles new things quite well. Um, so. That's the principal thing we look for is a horse that, that is, has a good calm temperament that anyone can get on and, and won't be disturbed by a beginner, you know, being a little unbalanced or flapping their legs a little as they get to know and learn what they're doing. Okay, one last question, and it has to do with snacks and reality. Mm -hmm. Horse names are notorious for being just whimsical and silly. Why do you think that is? <laughs> Are, are horse owners just whimsical people, like just enjoy a, a little bit of humor? <laughs> it can be. Snacks, actually, his full name, his registered name is Snackwell. And if you look at his registered, his sire and his dam, they have other names that are related to that. So it was kind of a pattern in that line of horses where they followed a pattern in naming him. So he's named after a, a, a snack cookie. Um, <laughs> he lives up to his name. He loves snacks. <laughs> Uh, so there's some of that that is whimsical and they follow a pattern. I actually don't know the history in reality's name. You'll have to ask <laughs> Kim if she knows anything. <laughs> well, we'll have to get to Kim. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dawn, for, for taking time to talk with us. And I really can't wait to see what happens with the Auburn program. Well, thank you. All right, and we are here with Kim with Havenwood, the instructor and also teacher at Auburn. Mm -hmm. So we'll just jump right in. How long have you been riding and or teaching? Well, I was very fortunate and blessed in that um, when I was young, my mother rode and she had horses. And so we always had horses um, since I was born. I got my first pony when I was three. I got my first show pony when I was nine. Um, and I did grow up on a small farm where we kept the horses at our own home um, and cared for them and also boarded some other horses for um, clients as well. So I was very fortunate to go up through 4-H and Pony Club, which are both excellent programs um, when I was growing up. And then also showed um, in college, I went to Virginia Tech and I showed in the IHSA and IDA um, as well. And then um, started working professionally, um, teaching riding lessons and training horses over 25 years ago, so. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got involved with the Havenwood and working with Dawn and Absolutely, yes, so um, I am a, an agriculture teacher at Auburn High School. Um, I've taught there for 15 years. I taught at Narrows High School for three years before that. And um, obviously I've been Dawn's trainer and instructor for quite some time, um, I think close to 20 years. <laughs> so. Uh, this is something that has always been a dream of Dawn's, and we've talked about it for years and years, um, and now we're actually able to, you know, have it happen. So it's been really, really rewarding for me to be able to take the different aspects of my life and bring them together to benefit the students. Um, I see a lot of need in um, students to help them develop things like work ethic, responsibility, and to motivate them towards some kind of path, whatever that path may look like. Um, you know, oftentimes there's a very clear path for students who want to go to college, but not such a clear path for students who, you know, want to go into the workforce or perhaps, you know, get a certification to do a trade. Um, and we would like to support students in all of those avenues um, so that they can be productive citizens. Training horses to jump barriers, like we saw earlier, that requires a lot of trust from both the rider and the horse. How do you build that trust? Well, as I believe Don mentioned, somebody needs to know what they're doing, either the horse or the rider. It's not a good idea, though it does happen often, um, for the horse to not 
know and the rider to not know. So generally horses are trained um, to do all things, um, including jumping, by someone who's a professional, who's knowledgeable and you know knows how to bring them along while challenging them and helping them grow but not over facing them so that they um, have setbacks. Some horses have more of a natural inclination to jump than others. Um, any horse can jump, absolutely any breed, but specifically thoroughbreds and warm bloods um, are, excel um, in jumping and you often see them in the highest levels of competition internationally. Um, so they tend to be easier, but sometimes more enthusiastic. So, um, which isn't always appropriate for a beginning rider. Um, but you know, we start with small jumps and work our way up and every horse has a different athletic ability. So some horses may be able to jump really large jumps like my horse Reality used to when she was younger. And some horses like Snacks are gonna stick to smaller jumps. Um, but it is important for the rider to learn on a horse that, that already knows or at least has some background um, that we know is going to want to take them over the jumps so the rider can focus on themselves and figuring out how to follow and stay with the horse and, and maintain their position. So with all the various types of riding that is out there, what is your favorite and what do you love to focus on? I have a hard time picking a favorite um, because I've done all types of riding my whole life, including Western. Um, I had a quarter horse when I was growing up and we did everything under the sun. We did a, we did a venting, which is dressage, show jumping in the arena, and then cross country jumping out of the arena. Um, we also did hunters, um, we did barrel racing, we did Western pleasure, we did trail, um, we did all, all different events growing up, which I think is really important for new riders to be exposed to all of the different types so that they can find, you know, perhaps what they want to focus on or the top couple things that they want to focus on. The last um, 15 years, I've mostly focused on dressage, but I do still do some jumping um, and a little bit of eventing, but I um, have been trying to to work my way up the levels of dressage as I have horses that, that are athletic enough to do that. So equine training goes back centuries. And is it something about horses in specific, specifically, or the behavior or the physical structure of the horse that makes them so ideal for, for riding? Mm -hmm. Yes, there's quite a bit actually about the horse that's unique. Um, compared to a lot of the other domesticated species. So horses are born in a precocial state, which means that they are physically able to do everything as soon as they hit the ground. They can run away from a predator. Um, you know, they can, they can eat all of that. They just, you know, it's not like they have to be carried around or, or taken care of um, because they are a prey species. And all of our training on horses basically goes back to using their natural instincts in a way to help them learn skills. Horses learn um, much more quickly and then hold on to information more than other species. Um, much like dogs, they do tend to bond with their people. Um, they like routine. Um, so I think all of those aspects of the horse, plus obviously, you know, their ability to travel, you know, far and wide um, made them much, very useful for humans and easy to train. So with the program at Auburn, you do academic tutoring as well. So what about the academic tutoring in horses helps combine to make this program so unique and, and diverse? Well, I think essentially we're using the horses as a modality to get the audience that we want to be able to help move them forward in their lives. So, you know, the horses are great for teaching responsibility, work ethic, um, you know, time management, decision making, critical thinking skills, a lot of the soft skills that we are, t are told by employers that are lacking in our current entry level workforce uh, members. So basically we can use the horses because, you know, these, the eight students that we have accepted into the program applied to the program and there were more students than that who applied, um, but they applied because they're interested in horses. Um, and so we've used that to kind of capture their attention and bring them in. And then the horses themselves, you know, again, the students will form relationships with them and bond with them. It really helps a lot with self-confidence because, you know, they, they can really see this progress that they're making on the ground and in their riding as they develop more knowledge and skills. Um, so we're using the horses to draw them in to, to have that larger impact on their lives, but also give them something that they enjoy at the same time. So, I mean, you can build quite a bit of confidence by 
being able to maneuver and work with a 1500 pound animal mm -hmm. safely. Yes. <laughs> yes, that does take some skill. <laughs> Just with anything in adult life, Havenwood has asked, you know, requires a code of conduct for the students. Mm -hmm. What about that code of conduct are you hoping the students will take past and beyond mm -hmm. the Auburn program? I would say the two key components that we're hoping uh, the code of conduct promotes would be consideration of others as well as um, responsibility and commitment. So, and those are things that are going to help them in, no matter what job they, they have and just in their lives and having positive relationships in all aspects of their lives. Was there any key takeaways that, that you want viewers or, or potential students to to know about Havenwood as y'all kick off August 2023. <laughs> yeah, well, we are so excited to have this opportunity to impact lives, um, and we really look forward to being able to empower these students with new skills and um, help them, you know, become productive citizens as they move on. And before we go, last question: what What would you say your style of instruction? here at Havenwood is, not necessarily as a teacher in Auburn, but here at right. Havenwood, how would you describe your style of instruction? Well, I have taught a wide variety of um, lessons, disciplines, levels of riders. I've actually coached Radford University's equestrian team the last eight years. And um, oftentimes, as in the lesson today, I have mixed levels <laughs> in a lesson. So it does work better if you have riders that are working on the same concepts in the same lesson, which will be an advantage to this program because um, the students will all be starting from square one together. However, some students do progress faster than others. So I would say my style of teaching is trying to identify the area of growth for each student um, as far as writing instruction. And that's where they're being challenged and it's, it's a little bit hard and maybe, you know, seems like they can't do it, but not to the point where they're scared or they absolutely can't do it. That window of challenge is where people learn and grow. So I try really hard to identify that for a certain period of time in the lesson so that they are still continuing to improve. Um, additionally, I focus a lot on biomechanics. Um, I came up through the Pony Club system, as I mentioned earlier, and that system, um, that organization has a curriculum that you follow. And so the riders first have to develop a secure base of support and then ultimately work towards having independent aids where they can communicate and train the horses, you know, to do fancy things, so to speak. Um, so my instruction focuses on helping them build that, that secure base of support to build off of. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. It's been wonderful. I can't wait to see <laughs> how the Auburn program unfolds. Thank you.